My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Michael Connolly. So today, Michael, we have a special show in store. We're at SPC 14 in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about OneDrive for Business and that it's now a standalone offer that you can have. It used to be called SkyDrive Pro. We're going to talk about all of that in this show. And you've got some, you've got some great insights as the engineer on this project. Yeah, and there's a lot of exciting announcements and conversations going on this week. But one of the things that we're the most excited to talk about is OneDrive, uh, OneDrive for Business now available as a standalone SKU. It used to be available as part of our suite and as a part of our SharePoint standalone offering, but now it's accessible to a much more wider, diverse set of organizations. Right, and a lot of people ask, where do I start? What, do I, what workload do I go to if I want to move to the cloud? And OneDrive for Business really fits the bill as a place to start with your journey into the cloud. There's so many organizations that are thinking about trying to get to the cloud, and this category, File, Sync, and Share, is the best way to get started. A lot of people, all, all the users, want to have access to their, to their files from all devices. They want to have a backup in the cloud. But th what they really want to do is they want to collaborate. They want to be able to share their files with their colleagues, and they want to be able to do rich co-authoring with our powerful Office online tools and have rich conversations to get their work done. And of course, you've got all of the SharePoint controls for access management control. The IT controls all wrapped around that. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about all of this to, on today's show. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, OneDrive for Business can be integrated seamlessly with on-premises SharePoint services. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Michael, what was the genesis for all of this change? You know, over the past couple of years, with the rising trends of such as the cloud, such as social, such as mobile, we're seeing a massive increase in file sharing. About a year and a half ago, when we first shipped SharePoint 2013, a very powerful and flexible tool, we carved off a point solution called SkyDrive Pro, which we now call OneDrive for Business, that allows organizations to roll out a private file sync and share service for every single user in the organization. And the results we've seen is pretty phenomenal. We've seen some pretty huge usage spikes, right? You know, historically, for any healthy service, we've been seeing trends like this. But with the rise of OneDrive for Business, we're starting to see things like this. And this part right here just keeps going up past the edge of the monitor. Right, so they are really using OneDrive for Business Storage. We're seeing a lot more usage, even versus Sites and SharePoint. So huge changes there in terms of just the uh, general uptick and the acceptance from a user standpoint. Beyond that, though, you've been working for the last year making it even better. So what are some of the things that you've done to even improve SkyDrive Pro. As we talk to our customers and also just listen to our own listening systems and our telemetry and our service, I would probably break our innovations and our improvements in, in three core areas. Okay. First is basic usability improvements. Not only are we just making things easier to use, having a one-stop shop to find all the files that are shared with me, turning on versioning by default, there's even some head-slapping improvements that we made just to help people sync. You know, it doesn't take a rocket science sense to figure out by taking a button that's really small up at the top and just bringing it closer to your work area and make it larger and maybe making it blue really increases the, the usability of our product. Right, and seeing like the new document Moving the upload button out of that really helps as well. But Ab absolutely, it's the, it's the little things that make the product easy to use. Right. Even beyond that, something else that we've done a lot of storage enhancements. Yeah. The, right? the second area I would talk about is storage. Um, we went bumped up the large file sizes all the way up to two gigs. Uh, default quota used to be seven gigs. We increased that to 25 gigs. And every organization has those a couple of vociferous storage users. So now we have these new flexible quota controls where you can take a handful of individuals in your organization and keep bumping up their quota all the way up to a terabyte. Right, and beyond that, I think that one of the other things that we've seen, what, like you said earlier in the first in the first bit, is the number of devices that people are using, the mobility trends. Yes, as a service, we can just listen to the service and see the diverse set of devices that are people coming and bringing you to work and hitting our service. So now we could create tailored exper uh, experiences for the devices people are using today to make sure SharePoint, OneDrive, and Office 365 looks great on the devices that are important for you. Right, and I know that you're dying to show some of this stuff in action, but. I want to make sure that we also give all of the IT Pro features some highlights. 
So I've got some, some more content prepared there. Why don't you get in the chairs, give me that pin back. Here's your pin, sir, and, and I'll hit the chair. Ready, get ready for some demos, because I want to talk about the IT Pro feature. So if we think about OneDrive for Business, one of the more exciting pieces of news here is the fact that I can link OneDrive for Business cloud storage right with my on-premises SharePoint. So we've got a new UI here with SharePoint uh, 2013 SP1 that lets you redirect your OneDrive for Business storage to the cloud service. So you can have seamless integration between OneDrive for Business and SharePoint on-premises. We've also done some other stuff in terms of being able to show what users see in the upper eyebrow of SharePoint. So for example, I can do things like turn off or turn on the OneDrive for Business uh, links that we see up here. I can either add or remove Yammer news, or news feeds and sites as well, right with this new UI as part of SharePoint 2013. And of course, because we're using Office 365, we have the ability to provision or deprovision users very quickly, and we've got all of the backbone of Active Directory if you want to use that, all of the uh, Office 365 identity management controls there. So if somebody leaves the company, I can very easily deprovision that account. And all I have to do is either get rid of his entire account offer as part of a licensing state, and that way he won't be able to access those services. Or if I want to, I can even individually turn off the relevant services like Office Online or SharePoint Online in order to remove uh, access to those capabilities as well. Beyond that even, I have the ability now with OneDrive for Business to increase storage. So if you think about it from an on-prem standpoint, what you'd have to do in many cases is buy more storage if I wanted to add 25 or 100 gigs per user across the board. With the power of the cloud, I've got all that scale to me at my disposal. I can basically go right to this OneDrive for Business settings page right in SharePoint online add users, I might have here, I've got Tejas and myself, hit the drop down, and I can basically go all the way up to a terabyte of additional storage if I want to add that for a user, and it just takes a couple of clicks of a mouse. I don't have to worry about buying data center capacity, storage servers, and all of that stuff. Very easy to en enhance and increase storage after, of course, after I've got enough headroom to do that, to add that capability to a user. So. Michael, I know you're ready, so why don't you go ahead and kick off some of those demos, I'll come and join you. So what I'm going to show you here is OneDrive for Business integrated with the rest of Office 365 online. What you can see here is our new quick command bar, so I can very quickly create new documents, upload existing documents, and I can start a sync relationship with my document library so I can take all these documents with me on the devices that I care about. You'll see our new great search functionality, as well as uh, a place where I can go to to see all the shares that were followed with me so I no longer have to keep all of those invite emails that I get sent to me and file them away just right. so I can remember what the URL, right. URLs are. Great filter. Um, also, you can see our site folders link. So I know OneDrive for Business is great for all my personal files, but I have all these group collaboration spaces mm -hmm. that I work with all of my colleagues, and now I can quickly link to all those document libraries so I can find all the documents that I care about. Very nice. Um, one of the really interesting things that we're doing is being able to have smart conversations um, using Yammer. So I could come in here, create a new Excel document, do all the co-auth uh, that I want with my colleagues, but also have rich conversations right in line with my content. Wow, so you can have a full social experience on any of the docs, hooking right into the Yammer. Yeah, and we're integrated with the, the suite in many more interesting ways as well. One thing that we see all the time is people taking uh, attachments in email, sending them around, and suddenly some poor guy in the organization has to take 12 fourth copies of that document and bring it all to together at the end of the day. Merge all those changes. Yes, this is something that we hear a lot of people asking for a better way, right? Now with modern attachments, it's really easy for me to start a conversation with my colleagues using the mail experiences I know about and just going right to my OneDrive and starting from my documents there. But not only do we do that, if I upload an existing document that's on this machine, I automatically could get that uploaded to OneDrive and share around one copy with all my colleagues who are all working on the same copy, again, instead of sending attachments around. So hold on, when you actually add an attachment, this is something that people have been asking us for forever. Why can't we just attach that file and have it get stored straight into SharePoint or OneDrive so it's centrally there? and have it basically ask me for whether or not I want to attach the file or put it in a shared location, and now we're delivering on that. Absolutely, and that's what we call modern attachments. Very cool. 
So even beyond that, you know, we've, a lot of people have other device types in addition to the Surface Pro that you're demo, demoing there from. So on the iPad, we've done a lot of great work in terms of having not only native app experiences, so we have a native OneDrive for Business app, and really, you can see I've got all of my, all of my files there. Everything is, is ready for me for my, uh, for my OneDrive. I can look at recents if I want to see all my recent files. And if you look down in the, or if you look up in the corner, you can see a, a small arrow pointing down. That means I've actually downloaded a file, so I can use that later. And the nice thing is with a device like this, I might only have 16 or 32 gigs of storage, so I might not want to sync my entire OneDrive account, because in, in some cases I might have 50 or 100 gigs worth of content. So in that case, what I can do is just selectively mark the ones that I want to take offline, and then if I want to go onto a plane or I don't have internet connectivity, I can, I can view those files. Uh, and look at them wherever I'm at, whether I've got a, a connection or not. Even beyond that, since we're on a mobile, mobile device and we have a mobile browser, we've done a lot of enhancements here as well, where when I go right into, um, right into my sorry, OneDrive for Business experience, you'll see that I have all of this touch-friendly, touch-enabled. I can go to my recent documents there as well. I'll see the same documents. Um, what's been shared with me, again, all of that great filtering. So I have all of that here in a very touch-friendly layout. One of the coolest features that, that, I, that I like about this is that even through the OA kind of uh, ability to jump between Outlook, People, Calendar, you see OneDrive tiles and Sites tiles, so I can get straight to my content, whether it's in email or in my OneDrive for Business account or in SharePoint. That's right, we're really excited about our new modern mobile web experiences, all built using HTML5 standards. So while we have a great native experience on that iOS device, we're seeing all these new devices show up in the workplace. And so we have this great experience that will work on any device that you show up directly via browser. So all this, all this great stuff, we've got you know, experiences on Windows, on mobile devices, you know, browser aware, we know if it's a mobile or a non-mobile browser. Really incredible, uh, you know, work that you've done from the from the OneDrive for Business team. So, with all of that, we're almost out of time. But let's before we wrap up, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false? OneDrive for Business can be integrated seamlessly with on-premises SharePoint services. Of course, the answer was true. You can seamlessly integrate OneDrive for Business right with your on-premises SharePoint solutions. Hey, and with the next round of innovations such as Oslo and groups that we talked about and announced earlier this week, I'm really looking forward to coming back and talking soon. Right, this is a great solution to start your journey into the cloud using OneDrive for Business. You've got all the controls wrapped around that with Office 365 to control access management and file security, and you've got all the great collaboration tools at your fingertips to really use those files once you start sharing them with others. So of course, all of this and more can be found on the Office blogs and with the Garage series on Wednesdays, microsoft.com slash garage. Thank you everybody for watching and goodbye for now.